morning guys sorry i'm a couple minutes late here we have the 2021 land rover range rover p400 hsc westminster edition i think that's all of its names and i know you guys have been asking for a new range rover for a long time and it took me this long to get a new one their press fleet was pretty depleted in the la area they just were taking a while to get the 2021s out here now we've got some so i brought you this vehicle and first, I'm going to say that uh, like the last couple weeks, we're going to answer the questions for the folks that are tuned in live first. Then we'll loop in some questions. Brett Adams is man in the camera as usual, and he's going to loop in some questions from the folks who are asking on Instagram. If you want to follow me there, it's at miles per hour. Also at miles per hour for TikTok. And then at YouTube's community page, we asked uh, some questions were asked in there. So we'll loop in those questions as there are spaces between questions from folks tuned in live. And one last thing before we get started, I want to give a special shout out to Hector Perez, who's the latest MPH member. Thank you so much for your support, Hector. And what is our first question? Brett, anyone who's tuned in live, thank you um, guys for joining. They asked if it's someone, uh, B&M Blogs asked if it's a diesel. This is not the TD6 diesel. This is the, the Westminster gets a 3.0 liter inline six turbocharged engine that makes 395 horsepower, 406 pound feet of torque. Pablo asked, what's the color name and how much does the vehicle cost? The color is Byron Blue. I think it's a wonderful color. Uh, I'm not typically like a, a baby blue fan, but this color is not baby blue. It's in some light, so it's like now kind of sh shaded over right now. It almost looks gray. And then uh, in bright sunlight, it looks more blue. The blue pops. It's got a metallic flake on the surface of the paint. It's a free color, which is great. And, uh, and then it also almost looks violet in, in other light. It's a pretty sweet color, not your everyday blue. And especially right now, there have been a lot of really harsh blues, which are cool, but this is not that. This is much more subtle. I think it's a great color. The car, the vehicle right here is $106,720, but the Westminster edition starts just $2,000 less than that. So 104, 800, I think. Um, interior details. Interior details. All right. Well, we're so, already getting there. Yeah. Let's start with the back seat. So you asked about the exterior color, but the interior, this Windsor leather, such nice supple leather, is ivory colored. Perforated seats, heated and ventilated. The vehicle's not on. Actually, let me start it up so we can show some of the interior stuff. Uh, we'll start it up because I think someone asked about the exhaust system at some point. So we'll get into it. <laughs> has a soft limiter does it no it yeah. didn't it, that goes all the way out to the red line of 6500 6500 yeah it's pretty cool wow. yeah that that's a pretty good all right so now that the car is on some of the interior features oh i like this wood right here oh yeah the what is this wood called you know it's a veneer but um i can't remember the name of the wood finish but it's it's also Everything about the vehicle is more on the subtle end, so it's it almost looks like black, piano black liqueur, but then you kind of get close and you can see the uh, the wood trim. So these seats are heated and ventilated, and you control them with these controls here. You push in on the little dials, they have like these magic wheels where you can, so quad zone climate control, that's standard on the Windsor. When you push in, I can now go to the left and I've got three stages of ventilation for the seats. If I go to the right, I've got three stages of heating for the seats. So that's pretty neat. If you don't want anything, go to the middle, pop it back out. And there are also some really cool controls on the windows here. So I'm, I'll probably just slide over and show Brett can show what's going on here. So up here in the windows, I can press this button and open or close this sunshade. I think there's some like leaves that were caught up in there. That was funny. So that's the opener, close the sunshade. And then this is one's cool. So if there's music playing in the back seat and you're like, I don't like that music at all, you could just mute it. 
You just press this one button here. Or jit or. And you turn our on or off the, the sound for the volume. You've got two stages of lighting here. So there's one like with a picture of a, a book. And so it's a more, it's a lighter um, light. It's, I think it's incandescent. And then, yeah. And then this other one, that, and they may both be LEDs. And then this one is a brighter light, both from this one spot here. Another cool thing I can do is, here, let me close this one so you can see it. But I can control the windows for either the left or right side. So now I'm gonna have, I may have pressed both, but now I can, no, just do the right one. So I can control the windows for that side, and then I can just control my window if I want, or I can do both. So that's just kind of cool. I like that. Um, so those are your window adjustments up there. The seats are crazy comfortable. I've got good leg room. The foot pocket's a pretty good size. I can slide my knee forward, six feet tall. Um, these are pretty closely matched. Okay, so that's my drive position. We want to see. I've got good leg room, and these are rubber mats that you can take out easily. So when you go hiking or whatever, you got boots. This folds down. And there are metal inlays here. So you've got hotter beverages. They'll stay hot. They're not like temperature controlled, but it helps. Little cubby in there. Nice place to rest your arm. So that's the back seat. And like, look at all the headroom. There's so much headroom here. It's awesome. So going to the front. Do we have any other questions? For the yeah. Um, we've got. This is a long answer. So I, I just want to like get a lot of the folks to We've tune in ask um, The Larson family, who is a member. Yes, thank you, Larson. Asked, uh, how does this compare to the autobiography edition? So the Windsor, is it going to be beeping me about the door? The Westminster edition is lesser than the autobiography. The autobiography is like the top trim level for the Range Rover. It has 550 horsepower from a supercharged V8, and it has like exclusive interior stuff. But this Westminster has a ton of features and it's an $11,000 package on top of the base Range Rover. So it's pretty well equipped, but the SV Autobiography is gonna upgrade like the wheels and the engine and all that other stuff. So it's, it's the top range. The Westminster is kind of like middle range. Um, what are all the models of the different Land Rover Range Rovers? Who asked that? Um, Hennick Tess Highway. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's good. Okay. <laughs> Hennick, I just want to give credit to folks who are asking questions. Um, so Hennick asks, what's the, what are all the Range Rover models? Yeah. All the Land Rover models? Yeah. Okay. So right now Land Rover has the, um, the Velar. They have the Range Rover Sport. They have the full-size Range Rover. There's the Defender. And that's the newest one. Um, we have the which replaced, or no, the the Discovery, sorry, replaced the LR4. And then there's also, there's a Range Rover, the, uh, the Evoque. My goodness, there are a lot of models. Yeah. And uh, the, a Discovery Sport, that's the last one. So I think that's the full spread of Range Rover models. That was not in size order, that was just all of them uh, that I remembered, but uh, there are a number of SUV models so if you want an SUV, there's something in the size bracket for you. And all of them are very capable off-road, some more so than others. Like this Range Rover is just a boss off-road. Um, what's the difference between this and GLS? So a Mercedes-Benz GLS is going to, first of all, have three rows of seating. This one only has two rows of seating. If you get the long wheelbase version of this vehicle, then which is like 10 grand more, then you can have a third row of seating in that one, because this wouldn't this wouldn't be enough space for a third row in this this wheelbase. Uh, but the GLS has three rows of seating and is not going to be as capable off road. Yes, it has an air suspension system, um, but it doesn't have a locking center differential. It doesn't have all of the sophisticated off road tech that this one does. It doesn't have a two speed transfer case. So it's just it's going to be limited to pretty much on road or like, you know, a fire road. This one can seriously go pretty much anywhere. Um, Uber or Lyft asked sunroof or Vista roof? Ah, so this is both a panoramic glass roof, but it also is a sunroof. 
and it opens really like there's a huge opening most sunroofs i've seen just like stop right here especially when they're a pano setup this one goes all the way back there you can't go make, make it go back any further than that but it's a pretty big opening and i love that yeah you get the panoramic stuff but you also get a sunroof so it is both is the answer to your question uber lift um how many cup holders does it have good question Maybe. let's see we got two here nothing more in here but i guess you can call this a cup holder because wrong side nope there it is. This is a cool box. So got two different settings for how cold you want your beverages. And because it has this, like a raised lid here, you can fit taller beverages in there. So you can probably get two, you know, medium sized beverages in there. There are cup holders. This is not a cup holder, but there's a, a slot in here for a larger beverage. The doors in the back, they're like an F. What's that? So two, three, four, sorry, five. <laughs> Six. Come on. It doesn't want to go. There it is. Seven, eight, uh, nine, and ten. Ten cup holders. If we count the doors. If we don't count the doors, then I'm going to say six. Who has that? Um, oh, wait, that was on here. Oh, that was Man. from the from phone questions? Um, Muhammad asked, does it have massage seats? These are not massaging seats, though it does have that as an option, that one of the packages you can add on are massaging seats. This one doesn't have it though. Uh, There's a head-up display, digital gauge cluster, and then two 10-inch screens here. We're still talking about interior stuff. So this this top one here, uh, you know, swipe and stuff like a smartphone. This bottom one here, you've got these dials. I know it's probably hard to see with all the glare, but these dials, just like the rear seats, and you can adjust the seat ventilation or heating. That's actually perfect timing because the Larson pin we just asked is the infotainment system intuitive, easy to use mm. and navigate? Yeah, so I'm gonna say it's fairly intuitive. The issues I have are things are pretty buried within the screen. Boy, I wish it would stop beeping at me. Um, things are pretty buried, so if you wanna get into some of the off-road settings, you can go here to vehicle and then you can change up your drive mode on this screen or you press this one piece right here that pops up and then you can go through the different drive settings and there are a bunch of off-road programs but to go deeper you have to like hunt in certain menus um uh, the 4x4 information menu up here leads you to some additional like options and additional information for your off-roading stuff so it's like you gotta kind of hunt around to get to certain settings in this screen but if you follow kind of the logic of okay i'm going into off-road now i'm going to this setting that setting whatever thing, thing it all like makes sense but you just kind of have to hunt around a little bit the screen is for the most part well first of all the resolution's really good great graphics it's fairly quick if the car has been running for a long time i found um, then it can get a little sluggish, but it's it's really pretty darn good. Also, like when you turn the car on, the gear selector dial comes up. I'll show you. So you saw it go down. It's a little party trick. I just think it's cool. Um, how, uh, horsepower, torque, and zero to sixty. Uh, so, 395 horsepower, 406 pound-feet of torque. Let's go look at the engine. I also don't want to hear the beeping anymore. <laughs> Let's go 3 liter inline six turbocharged engine, 395. I thought it was faster that time than usual. 395 horsepower, 406 pound-feet of torque, zero to 60 is around six seconds, and top speed is 140 miles per hour. Fuel economy is 20. I think 20 combined dead, because it's 17 city, 23 highway, 20 combined. Not much to see. No, a lot of plastic engine cover. Yeah. But it's not loud. It's not a big, like, loud clanging engine, which is cool. Um, Blake asked, does JLR make reliable products these days? Yeah, so I mean, that's like one of the bigger complaints people typically have of Jaguar Land Rover products. Uh, it's just that they don't, they don't last all that well. 
And I would say for a Land Rover vehicle, it kind of centers around two specific things. The air suspension systems, and well, um, just look at the wheels, what we're talking about, the suspension system. So the air suspension on this vehicle can raise the vehicle up three inches. So that's gonna give you so much ground clearance off-road. And then it can lower it to an access height. It's like, I think two inches lower than its regular height sitting right now. Um, so if you've got like a parking structure or something like that, then you can kind of clear those pretty easily. Or if you have a low garage door, then that's going to be super helpful for you. And it can kind of creep along at that access height. You can't drive it at freeway speeds like slam, but, or you can't drive it at freeway speeds up in an always uh, raised up height. But the air suspension system is pretty cool. It is something that has failed notoriously on Land Rover models. But in talking with a Land Rover engineer at one of, I think it was the new Discovery's launch, they said that they engineer the air suspension systems to last pretty flawlessly for 15 plus years. And so it kind of makes sense, if you have that understanding, it kind of makes sense that like early 2000s, Land Rover Range Rovers and Range Rover Sports are having air suspension systems that fail at that point because that's outside of the period where they engineered them to last. So if you kind of just come in going, if I, if I still have an air suspension system that works in an early 2000s Range Rover, I can just expect that's gonna be a cost it'll have to take care of. The electronics are the other things that sometimes Land Rover vehicles have issues with, and that I can't really speak to on these brand new models. I don't know how it's gonna last. I know that for now, the system works smoothly and I don't really have issues with that. But one thing that I did encounter so far uh, was just that I like the clamshell hood. I like having a tailgate so you can pop this down and just sit down and it's really nice the carpet and all that. Um, but the rear seats, so you got these power controls to raise or lower the rear seats. One, they take forever to go down. But two, like sometimes they'll just, well, right now they're paused while the front seats move forward. Like that's all expected. But I've got both buttons pressed and now just the right seat wants to go down. So if I release them at some point and then make the left one go down, it'll do it but it should have just done it the first time when I had both buttons pressed. So it's like small little electrical hiccups like this that make me wonder how it's gonna last in, you know, seven, eight, nine years, second owner, maybe even third owner situation, but it works. You just have to be patient with it. But I think it's gonna be pretty darn reliable, certainly from a mechanical standpoint. If you encounter strained electrical gremlins like this, issues like this, then you know, just be prepared for that. But for the most part, I think the vehicle is pretty solid. That was a long-winded answer, sorry. Lake Nona asked, are the seats uh, more comfortable in the front or the back? Front seats are a little more comfortable. They just kind of like hug you a little tighter. The back ones are more loose, but they're still super, all seats are very comfortable in this vehicle. Really uh, for a long distance travel, that's what they're made for. The Larson family asked, uh, how's the visibility and is there parking and driver assist functions? Yeah, so visibility is awesome. So it took you two steps to put these down, but you just press one button and they go up. So because it's got really tall windows, when you're in here, it's so easy to see out of the back of the vehicle. Like you've got that narrow C pillar or D pillar back there and relatively narrow given the size of the vehicle. Um, and it, it doesn't really give you a blind spot because it's perfectly lined up with a headrest that would already have been an issue anyway. So visibility is really, really good. And this one has, the Westminster gets the full suite of adaptive, like adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, lane departure warning, automatic emergency braking, blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic. It's got all the, all the good stuff that you need for your active safety stuff. Any other questions rolling in? Uh, how's the quality feel of the interior compared to something like an Audi Q7? Good question. Yeah, I, I've not found anything that really doesn't feel high quality. It all feels really nice. Even the veneer wood trim, which sometimes like in other vehicles, like feels like it's gonna break apart in your hands. I've not encountered any creaks or anything like that. It all feels really solid. Yeah, that's surprising. Usually this is what- Yeah, like, this is the kind of stuff that just like, and... which yeah. like all the German vehicles do that. Not this one, it feels really well built. Um, would you take this or um, the Rolls Royce SUV? The Cullinan? Yeah. Mm. 
Who asked that? A lot of people. <laughs> a lot of people? Yeah, there's like quite a few coming in about it. Okay, well, let's see. The Cullinan feels honestly like you're driving a bank vault. This, which is cool, but it's also like you don't feel at all connected to the outside world. And that's that's the appeal, right? You're like, I'm driving this this bank vault that no one else is going to like interrupt my experience. This one, you have all of the luxury. That it's quiet. It's so smooth with the air suspension system. You've got great visibility. You're sitting up high. They're comfortable seats. I, I don't want to go too crazy in depth with my impressions because I will have a review for this vehicle coming in a couple weeks. So like, queue up for that one. But this compared to a Cullinan feels a bit more in touch with what's going on not like disturbed by things that are going on the outside it feels so luxurious this is like a dream daily but i would say it's it's not quite so removed from the real world let's put it that way um do you consider long-term reliability as a factor of the length of ownership uh not for first owners so i i mean i'll go more into reliability and all that in my review but i first first time owners shouldn't have any concerns uh your warranty period i think it's a four year fifty thousand mile warranty for this one um don't have any concerns during your warranty period i would not worry for the first like six seven years of ownership with this model uh beyond that if you're the second or third owner you might expect certain things uh third owners certainly expect the air suspension system if we're talking 15 plus years to probably go out and certain electrical gremlins to crop up but that's kind of to be expected for any luxury vehicle in this segment like a, a 10 12 year old bmw x7 i'm sure will have some electrical gremlins gls will have electrical gremlins so it's not it's not like unusual i would say for the segment for, to have some sort of issue going on with your electronics in the car so i wouldn't say this is any less of a or any greater of a concern for the second or third term owner than any luxury German or uh, European model. Um, Abby asks, um, "What's the difference between this and the Mercedes-Benz GLS?" Uh, we we talked we talked about that one. Yeah. That, yeah. Should we go for a drive? Let's do it. Okay. Oh, one sec. The show's yours, yours, Brett. You know, for the next two seconds. It's your oh show. yeah, yeah. Hey guys, uh, welcome to my channel. Um, this is the car. Oh, you're done now. Oh, Did you have see. fun? Uh, yeah, I had a few seconds of fame. I also love armrests for the front seats. You know, this is just cool. Yeah, put your armrest down. Enjoy yourself. What the? Oh, it may have, so you, these turny things, you have to turn them to release it and it'll go down further. So, there you go. You happy with that? Well, you know what? Deal with it. We got armrests for the front seats. Not every vehicle has armrests for the front seats. Um, is this better than a Land Cruiser? Yeah, so off-road, uh, that that seems like an age-old uh, question. Like this, which of the lands? Do you want the Land Cruiser? Do you want the Land Rover off-road? I think that the ground clearance is going to be favorable towards the Land Rover because it has the air suspension system, it can raise up extra high. And in terms of ease of use, as a driver, this is gonna have it because it's got all of the electronic assists, all the various modes with the torque vectoring and, and all that kind of stuff they could do for you effectively automatically um, to make it so easy to go off-road. But I think the Land Cruiser, if you're really gonna be sloshing it for, I mean, if you're on like a year long trip, I would probably take the Land Cruiser because if something happens and you're like, and something gets caught and, and damages the air suspension in this one, uh, that's not an issue with the Land Cruiser. It doesn't have that system. And so you'd just be able to keep going, keep doing your off-roading stuff. Whereas this one, you'd have to get that kind of fixed. But which would, uh, if we were just talking about like a, a trip, a week long trip to go off-roading, these would be like neck and neck. They would, they would both be able to do insane things. If it was a clearance issue, this might have a slight edge. Um, the Larson family asked about the different drive modes and the differences between them. Yeah, so the drive modes are outlined here on this system. You can swipe to, you know, if I wanted to climb it or seats or whatever, but right now we've got it on a vehicle and these are all the drive modes listed out. There's a dynamic drive mode, which 
this is a tall and you know not necessarily uh, uh, engineered for corner carving, but it does have a dynamic drive mode, which will reduce some body roll. You've got an eco mode oh. for efficiency. Oh, to give up. Tap this center thing twice in the back. Let's see if that helps. There we go. All right. So I've got an eco drive mode. There's a normal drive mode, and then you get into your off-road stuff. And I can either press the buttons, or I can press this thing here, and this brings up the, the selector. And then I go through, there's a grass, gravel, snow mode. There is a mud and ruts mode. There is a rock crawl mode. And then I think a sand mode. I don't know if I can do them on the fly. You can, look, grass, gravel, snow. Mud and ruts, and it changes up the graphics behind it, which is cool. Then sand, okay, so it's got a sand mode, and then it's got the rock crawl program. And this is all gonna tell the vehicle what to expect. When you get into certain modes, I think the rock crawl, you have to go into the four range, four low, so it has a two-speed transfer case. So to get into the four low, you're gonna press this mountain button right here with low on it, and you'll go into neutral, it'll make the shift, go back into drive, and then you're in your four low mode. The vehicle's not gonna go very quickly um, because it's just gonna be giving you as much low end torque as possible to scamper over your obstacles. But yeah, I mean, the, the torque vectoring system on this vehicle is incredible. And, and what's so impressive about Land Rover vehicles is like, I did a program in, uh, it wasn't Iceland, it was Finland. And they had these Land Rovers on 22 inch wheels, these skinny little tire sidewalls, not these big all terrain or, or sorry, mud terrain tires or anything like that, just your regular all season tires. And it was just getting over ridiculous slippery hills and all these crazy obstacles. That just, it goes to show how sophisticated the electronic systems are these, on these cars. They're just so impressive off-road. Um, someone's asking about this little glove ah, right there. Good question. So this has two glove boxes. You got an upper glove box. Oh, whoa. And then a lower one. Hmm. Pretty neat. Nice. Um, a lot of people are asking about the sound system. The Meridian sound system, oh, I can't remember off the top of my head how many speakers it is. It's an upgraded system over the basic system. And yeah, I, how many watts does it do? I can't remember, sorry, I can't remember off the top of my head uh, the, the number of speakers or the wattage, but I know it's an upgraded Meridian sound system compared to the standard system. And then um, some people want to, or actually I think it's the same person over and over. Uh, let's see who it is. Sharma wants to see the uh, the amazing windshield wiper system. Oh, okay. Well, the windshield wiper system where the water comes out of the wipers. I can show you that. Oh, that's the rear one. That's not going to help. If you were facing behind me, you could have seen that. Those are some good wipers. Yeah, there's some good wipers. Um, What's cool about the, this windshield is it's got, I don't know if you can see it with the camera, but it has these oh. little veins. And the veins are, are uh, conduit through it and it'll heat the windshield. So if you're like in a place with ice, you can heat the windshield and it's not just the air throwing defrosted air on the windshield. It's actually these heating lines that are uh, getting all the ice off of your windshield. It's pretty cool. Um, Larson family asked about the body roll and handling. Handling is acceptable. This is not a sport SUV, even though like it, for the price, it's gonna compete with things like the BMW X7 M50i, because there's no longer an, a 50i for the 21 model year, there's just the M50i. So for the price, it's gonna get into that territory with those vehicles um, and the uh, GLS, 580, I think at that price point. No, I think it's still the 480 uh, or whatever the lesser, 450. Um, and the, the Germans are gonna be a little more athletic in corners. This is a bit more focused on the daily drive and then of course your off-road capability. But how quiet and smooth is this right now? I'm not hearing anything. Um, For something as like non-aerodynamic as this, this is so impressive how quiet it is. Uh, a few people that might have come a little bit late want to hear the cost. So the Westminster is an $11,000 package over the base Range Rover, and it costs 104000 
875. This one has tested with just a couple options is 106 700. And again, I'm going to restrain my impressions on whether it's worth it for my review that's coming out. But just know I'm having a good time right now. So smooth. It's very smooth. Um, it looks like the touch screen, it looks like the steering wheel has touch screen buttons. Are these nice to use or are normal buttons better? Uh, who asked that? Um, Jor. Jor asks about these controls on the steering wheel, and they are pretty cool. So when the car is off, they're completely blank. When the vehicle is on, they give you these adjustments. This one for your cruise control system, your lane keep assist system, your heated steering wheel. Um, and then on this one over here, they change. So if I press menu, then it gives me a different set of controls to work through the menu. So they're, they're adaptive to what you're selecting within the infotainment, your gate cluster up here. So these are pretty cool and um, they don't feel cheap at all. Like I've, I've dealt with like Pinot Black controllers up on steering wheels that feel like if I press too hard, it'll just break off my finger. These do not feel cheap at all. Larson family wants to see the adapt adaptive cruise control. Well, we're on the highway, Larson family, so that is a great timing. Set it here. This person's going real slow in front of us. And then I've got the lane keep assist system on. Now, important to note, this is not a, um, a steering assist or a lane centering system. So it's not just going to perfectly keep me in the center of the lane at all times. It's just going to keep me from deviating out of the lane. So right now I've got adaptive cruise control on and I'll just do a deliberate lane departure here so we can see it. And it just corrected with the steering. I'll do it again. Let's look on the steering wheel right now just to see this. So I'll just go deliberate lane departure and it corrected me back in. So it does a good job of keeping me in, in the lane, but it's not going to perfectly keep me centered. So right now if my hands are off the wheel, it'll just float with the, you know, the curvature of the road, but it's still keeping me in the lane, just not centered perfectly. So it does its job as advertised. You don't, they don't advertise this as a, you know, steering assist system or a lane centering system. Um, oh, someone said that there's 12 speakers, 380 watts. There you go. Thank you. Is that the base system though, or is that the Meridian? I feel like the Meridian, uh, Meridian. is... That is the Meridian, yeah. okay. Uh, Avi Ram. Thank you, Avi. Um, Some folks are asking about the sound system. 12 speakers, 380 watts. The random TV asked, uh, does it feel slow to drive? Slow? No. 395 horsepower, it, it can hustle. Um, it doesn't feel like a performance SUV. It feels like a well-endowed, plenty powerful luxury SUV. But I'll, I'll put the hammer to the floor uh, after make this right turn. So I'll go into sport drive mode here just by pulling the selector dial over to the right and then I'll put my foot down. And it gets moving. Not bad. Yeah, not bad. It doesn't, again, it's not like throwing you back in your seat. That's not the experience that Land Rover wants with their Range Rover, but it does get you moving. You should not have any want for power, and certainly when you're off-road, you'll have plenty. I actually love this vehicle with the TD6 engine. This or the Range Rover Sport or the Discovery, their turbo diesel is awesome. That would be my engine choice. The Larson family asked uh, the steering feel. Uh, so again, not they're not really going for driving engagement, so there's not a ton of feel as you're going through corners through the steering. You get an idea of what the tires are doing, but it's not, it's not that that sensation that you get when you're driving a performance SUV and, and you have this anticipate, anticipation of really feeling connected with the vehicle. That's that's not really the experience here. I, I kind of know what's going on with the tires, but it's not lucidly painted in my mind. Um, well, okay, now I don't really know what to think about the speakers because now there's like a few people, 23 speakers, signature sound system. Okay, that's a different, that's gonna be a different upgrade, probably just on the autobiography that one 12 speakers 850 watts yeah i think it was 850 watts i don't think it's three sorry to correct you obviously but i'm pretty sure it was 850 now that i'm remembering the specs 12 speakers 850 sounds right 
because 385 sounds pretty low of a wattage for a 12 speaker sound system. That might be like on the standard. Yeah, that might like be the that. standard. So 12, 850 sounds like the Meridian sound system. I just can't get over how nice this ride quality is. Yeah, it's it's very. It seems like it's in comfort mode all the time. Yeah, I'm just cruising. Um, Joel asked, does it have a rear seat center console? It does. Yeah, so that center console I showed, so if you missed that, go ahead and watch earlier when the live Q&A is over. Uh, go ahead and watch earlier. I pulled down the center console and showed that there's uh, two cup holders, a little cubby, and the cup holders have this metal, metal ring around them to kind of keep the hot beverages insulated. Let's go to um, dynamic and just do this one corner. What see. is the top speed? Top speed's 140. So, I mean, you know, it holds its own in the corner for sure. It just, you're not, you don't have all this brimming confidence like you do in a performance SUV. I would not go find a Canyon Road in this, let's put it that way. Not the right vehicle. But brake feel is good, like strong braking. When you're in sport and dynamic, you're getting good throttle response. It's just not, not the corner carver. Um. Uh, what's the difference between a Velar and the SV autobiography? Velar is a model. So the Land Rover Range Rover Velar is the entry point into the Range Rover range. Uh, the SV autobiography is a trim level for the Velar, for the Range Rover Sport, and for this full-size Range Rover. Super quiet. You really don't hear anything no, outside. It's so nice. The tires are super quiet, also. Yeah, super quiet tires, and they have uh, an acoustic insulation for the glass. Um, You'll see the turning radius is really good as well. Turn. How does it feel to drive with a longer wheelbase than Sport? Uh, so then that's a comparison to the Sport. The Sport is just going to feel a bit more dynamic in the corner. Well, good turning radius. Yeah, there's something this big that's impressive. Yeah, so the Ford Sport is just going to feel a bit more dynamic. This stretched wheelbase is going to feel stable, um, but not as nimble. Um, the Ram TV asks if it creaks, and it it actually does very well with that. Yeah, I'm I'm not really hearing any creaks. I haven't heard a single creak. Even nope. when you press, it, it's got the press test. Yeah, the press test is solid. Yeah. Yeah, no, very high quality. This feels very much worth the price. Ah, oh, man, there you go. It's giving an impression. Darn it. You didn't hear that. I didn't hear that. I was supposed to keep that for the review. Watch the review, but this, yeah. Um, DBX or this? Oh, man. Well, I mean, we're talking about a healthy price premium for the DBX. DBX is 176 to start. This is 104 to start. So it's, it's tough to compare the two. I mean, the DBX feels perhaps more, more of an occasion, you know, but this feels just as good as the DBX in terms of a luxury commuter daily driver. DBX is certainly more beautiful. This is, this is elegant and upscale, but DBX is more beautiful. I think a vehicle is just the best looking SUV you can buy. Any more questions? Um, Jor asks, isn't this, isn't this model called the Vogue or is that the older model? Maybe no. You're, maybe you're thinking Evoke. No, oh yeah, you, maybe you're thinking the Evoke. The Evoke is a different Land Rover model, lesser Land Rover model. This, is, this one has been called the Range Rover since 1970. It's actually celebrating its, what, how, what anniversary would that be? <laughs> uh, 40th? 50, 1970. Oh my gosh, yeah. Dude, it's 20. <laughs> Oh my gosh, yeah, 50th. Um, is there that a, wasn't just a math fail, that was I didn't know what year it was yeah. fail. Um, is there a head-up display on this car? Uh, there is a head-up display. Uh, heart, I, I don't think you can see it. See it but there's, there. I can assure you, there's a head-up display <laughs> on the Range Rover. And it changes the information that it gives you. So if you go into the off-road modes, then it will give you like wheel articulation information, you know, all that stuff is 
in your head-up display, so it's in your peripherals. You don't have to be hunting around in here. It's pretty cool. The adaptability. It's just wild to think that as comfortable as we are right now, what this can do off-road. I think that's the that's the craziest part about the, the Range Rover. And I think it might have been Blake who asked in uh, one of the questions from YouTube's community page or Instagram whether this feels dated because the Range Rover has been out in its current iteration for can't I can't off the top of my head I can't remember how many years but it has been out for quite some time and there are new Range Rover models the Velar and the um, uh, other ones there are new other Land Rover models that are, have come out and they've got new looks and, and new tech and all this kind of stuff this one doesn't feel dated it feels almost um, evergreen in in its appeal in that it yeah it has this shape such an iconic shape but the, the shape itself means premium and capability and so that they have no issues with the shape they've upgraded the tech this has kind of the latest duo touch touch pro duo system with two 10 inch screens and a digital gauge cluster and a head-up display and all your safety stuff they're not missing anything in terms of the tech it doesn't feel dated relative to the other land rover models it just the shape is just an evergreen shape I just want to let you know we're at 41 minutes. All right. I think that's probably going to be a good time to, to wrap things up. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope I answered your questions again for the fourth time. Uh, I'll say go ahead and watch my review that's going to be coming out for this one. And uh, speaking of Rolls Royce, we were talking about the colon There will be a Rolls Royce ghost review, not this Monday, but next Monday. So look forward to that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great rest of your weekend. Thank you, Brett, for manning the camera as usual.